Okay, so, so far we've been talking about economists uh, as scientists uh, and like, like any other field, let's say, you know, we were thinking about medicine, um, we know that there are different types of, of doctors out there, right? There, there are orthopedic doctors or there are pediatricians or there, there are uh, neuro physicians or neurosurgeons, they, they do different things, right? But broadly, um, if we were to think about classifying economists, the field of economics is traditionally divided into two broad subfields, okay? Um, one is microeconomics and the other is macroeconomics. So if you have this, if you remember this uh, little cartoon I have on iLearn, it really nicely summarizes what these different types of economists try to do, okay? Um, the field of economics, um, uh, again, you know, we have obviously very, very different types of uh, microeconomists and different types of macroeconomists and study different phenomena. But uh, just broadly speaking, uh, what microeconomics is, it, it is the study, it is the study of how smaller units like households and firms make decisions and interact in markets. Okay, so it's almost like, you know, if you were a microeconomist, you are looking through a microscope at the economy and looking at, you know, the smallest uh, units that you can think of and trying to uncover their behavior and their decision making and their interactions. But if you were a macroeconomist like myself, then you might be looking through that telescope uh, at, the, at the economy and looking at uh, economy-wide phenomena. So macroeconomics is the study of the economy as a whole or the study of, oops, study of economy-wide phenomena like inflation. You know, we might be able to see whether in an economy prices are going up over time or down over time. Economic growth. Is our economy growing or are we in a recession? Inequality. And what is happening to inequality over time? Is it going up or is it going down? What is happening to inequality uh, as far as different age groups are concerned, different racial groups are concerned, different genders are concerned, uh, and, and so on and so forth, okay? Um, and what is going on with unemployment, for instance? So these are some of the different topics uh, or different economy-wide phenomena that are discussed in the news and in the media a lot. So um, these are really the two distinctive roles uh, or the two broad subfields that you can classify economists into. But um, this is to, it, it, is, it is important to remember that uh, despite the uh, distinctiveness of uh, micro and macro, the two fields are closely intertwined, okay? So you might have uh, a microeconomist uh, sorry, a macroeconomist that might want to look at an effect of a federal income tax cut on overall production of goods and services, but to analyze this, uh, they they must consider how a tax cut affects household decisions and uh, um, about you know how to spend on goods and services. So they are high, highly intertwined. In fact, most of the macro that we do today is is micro, is is built on micro. Um, decisions. Now let's turn to the two types of statements that we encounter a lot uh, when we think about uh, economists playing roles as scientists versus um, policy advisors. So when economists are, are talking like scientists, they are trying to explain the world, they are trying to be descriptive about the world or they describe the world as it is.
But when they do so, we can always, um, or they can always go back and test whether these statements were true or not. So can test these statements. So let's take an example. Okay, an example, a nice example would be um, to, uh, for a positive statement would be um, minimum wages or minimum wage laws cause unemployment. Okay, now what economists do um, is typically that they would look at, let's say we were looking at San Francisco, um, you would look at when was that law passed, right? Let's, let's say there was, you know, 2018 when minimum wage became $15 in the city, you would look at unemployment before 2018, right? Before 2018 and what is going on after 2018. And you would compare the two and you would see, well, did really minimum wage laws or minimum wage wages uh, rising um, cause unemployment? Um, and these types of studies are done in different cities and uh, it, it is true that not always do, would we find that this statement is true. For example, in San Francisco and, and even in Seattle, for example, economists found that minimum wage laws do not cause unemployment. In fact, a lot of employers who employ unskilled workers uh, or minimum wage workers would pass on the, this increased cost to customers. Uh, in terms of higher prices. So if, if a minimum wage worker were to um, work at a restaurant, then the restaurant would just uh, increase prices on their menu uh, of, of food. And, uh, and this would be passed on to customers and would, would cause an increase in prices rather than an increase in unemployment. Okay, but this is, the, this is something that can be tested, a statement like this. Um, the other type of statement that economists make are normative statements, and this is when they are trying to act as policy advisors. Okay, so when they make normative statements, they are trying to be prescriptive. You know, like let's say you were feeling lethargic and uh, uh, you know, sitting at home during the pandemic, you you just gained a bunch of you know you just gained a, gained a, a couple of uh, pounds. So you know, a prescriptive statement would be you need to get um, 150 minutes of exercise a week. Okay, so prescriptive statements are often um, seen in the news. Okay, and this is an attempt, or these statements attempt to prescribe. how the world should be. Okay. So an example um, in terms of economics here, I'll give you two examples. One is a statement like this, where the government should increase the minimum wage okay now you can't test the statement right this is coming from a point of value judgment um, where this is sort of a prescription this is what should happen okay or another statement could be a fiscal stimulus is needed during a pandemic. Okay, so statements like these are normative statements. Now, I would like you to go to the book and read about disagreements among economists, and there are plenty to read about. Uh, but also, what are some of the propositions about which most economists tend to agree? Okay, so that's kind of the end of chapter two.